Good morning, folks. We're going to see the SDO satellite calibration jostles in today's sequences. Calibrate it. We'll hit weather, earthquakes, the Saturn hexagon, super flares, cosmology, and climate change, and we're starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star were calm. The days of expected low flaring and low solar wind pressure continue as telemetry returns to normal range in the plasma stream. Geomagnetic conditions, all quiet. Largest quake of the last day originally came in at 6.7 and was downgraded to 6.3. Blood echo depths at the low velocity zone. But the rarest event of the day was in the Virgin Islands. 5.3 is well above average for this area. Folks, Hurricane Delta is readying to take a north-northwest motion and turn it back east slightly as it continues northward. Lightning overlay in the GO-16 view here as its track towards the Texas-Mexico border is but a momentary thing. The models have it swinging directly into Lake Charles, and if it must, let's hope it hits quickly and moves on before the flooding gets too bad. Let's go to the links and start with a September U.S. climate report. As you can see, it was a month of hot and cold depending on where you live. As we mentioned a few days ago and will enhance later in the show today, comparing daily max top right to daily minimums bottom left, we see that blue holds stronger coverage on the maximum map top right, meaning that this last month the temperature once again, deviates to more nighttime heat than daytime. This concept was in our October 6th morning show, and it's coming up again here in just a moment. But first, we've got an incredible model of Saturn they say explains the polar hexagon. The hexagon on Saturn is one of the more impressive and spooky things in our solar system. Turns out, helps to map the jet streams and cyclones just like they do here on Earth. Up next, super flares. Correct conclusion in this next paper, but for the completely wrong reasons. The study modeled UV enhancements during superflare events and determined they are likely to be extinction level moments for planets, something shown here on Earth for the Sun's version of a superflare in past papers. But this group uses the UV, as I said, and does not account for the loss of ozone, which occurs with solar protons during superflare events, and it also does not account for the particle and high energy radiation bombardment effect on the planet. As long as they realize these are era-shifting events, that's okay. But by the way, the second half of Chapter 8 in our textbook gets more attention, but the first part is about that super flare scenario on our sun, and it plays out on our star every few centuries. Let's jump way out to the cosmos next, and we find nature calling it the last gasp. Folks, it's one thing for us to call the end of dark matter, but when does the funding stop? When do the journals give up? Probably soon. Folks, after the Xenon 1T and the next level Argon experiments, there's basically nowhere left to hide. Of course, it is our contention that what's hiding is the dust, plasma, and the electromagnetic forces and interactions of them. And we've been calling for an end to dark matter searches for almost a decade. Looks like we may be close, because they aren't going to find anything this time either. Okay, folks, let's come back to that story from October 6th. Not only is global warming mostly at night, which we showed again earlier in the show with the climate report from September, but while day heat brings dryness, nighttime concentration of warming leads to a wetter atmosphere. Now let's recall that this year, we've seen amazing advancement in the identification of the uncertainties, resulting bias and oversensitivity of the climate models to CO2. Well, we're coming round to the table from the other side today looking at the spread of the climate models and demonstrating that what's causing their spread is the uncertainty in water vapor and ice albedo. That's clouds, ice at cloud tops, plus more. The errors propagate from the guesses, filling in the gaps of the uncertainty. And now we come back to late 2017, early 2018, when Princeton started this whole cloud uncertainty thing. The clouds are cooling agents, unappreciated in climate models. And well, folks, the same writer for the Princeton blog, same scientists on the study, Princeton's Yin and Poparato are back, and in the most creative way possible, say it's about to get cooler. The night warming and wetter atmosphere that should be fresh in your mind means more clouds and less sunny days for solar energy production. If that's not the most epic way to get a paper published implying that this planet is going to self-regulate cooling, I don't know what it is. And of course, it complements such regulations in the sea. New video from ESA breaks down all the ice loss and how it's getting faster. While the video holds to the global warming cause and sea level rise narratives, 
One hopes we don't forget the two dozen or so papers, including the four big ones this year, which show that relieving the polar regions of their ice shuts down the ocean heat transport in a slower version of the movie The Day After Tomorrow. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, we are going to give our store and my wife their version of a fall break tonight. After today, our books, hats, shirts, etc. won't come back online until the following weekend, when you will also be able to get the PDF version of our textbook for those with prohibitive shipping costs. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.